Hello, welcome to Hook Legends. I'm Henry, your host, and today I want to give you some tips regarding how to set up and situations where to use a two jig rig. But first, I would like to say thanks for all the subscribers. Our fan base, we're really growing. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, if you're enjoying these videos and you have not subscribed, do me a favor, reach up right now, click that subscribe and like button. Make sure you click the notification bell so you'll be alerted when future videos are released. So, once again, in this particular video, I want to talk to you about um, situations when you may want to use a double jig outfit, and I'm going to show you how to tie it up. But before that, I want to talk to you about a, a concept or an idea, um, or basically just a plan. You know, when, whenever I'm going out fishing, I don't ever just decide how I'm going to go out and fish. I mean, I decide, but I always have a backup, and I'm going to tell you the reasons for that. Now, this particular video is a prime example of a day where, based on the weather conditions, you know me, I, I, I come outside, I look at the sky, if it's a bluebird day, I kind of in my mind have a plan on how I think I can catch fish that day. And that's what happened. I went out and I thought the name of the video was going to be No Mills in This Boat. And it ended up I didn't have any mills in the boat because I had a plan for No Mills in the Boat and that's how I was going to fish. But, um... These fish over the past week or so had been up in a creek channel, right up in the mouth, the first one third of a creek channel. And um, they were there. There were schools of fish there, and that's how I, I saw them there. I caught one or two when I kind of went out and pre-fished or just was playing around. And I went back with a pretty high confidence level that I was going to catch fish there. Put up in that cove, number one, the wind was blowing extremely hard. I mean, it was blowing. And um, so I was going to have a hard time fishing in that area anyway. But then after checking my um, radar equipment, my depth finders, I there was no fish there. And um, for a while, it just I, it was a little bit confusing because they were there just days or a week beforehand. And um, so normally when, when conditions change, fish will move out to the next deeper level. I went out to two or three levels deeper and no fish. It looked as though someone had just taken a net and combed the lake and all the fish were gone. So finally, you know, I was always going through through my, my options in my mind of where these fish could be in. It was at dark. Now, I normally go out anywhere from an hour and a half to two to maybe sometimes three hours before sundown. I, I normally have a plan. I go out. I implement that plan. I try to catch some fish and get some nice video footage, you know, for you when the sun is up high so you get a nice um, video image. Well, my plan kind of went out the window. Um, it was getting probably within 15, 20 minutes of dark before I caught the first fish. And um, that fish was a little tiny fish. I, I don't even think I had that one on video. But I decided to go down into some of the shallow areas, about four feet deep. And um, to my surprise, that's where they were. Bam, 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 bam. I mean, one after the other, these fish was just hitting it. Now, unfortunately, the it was dark. I mean, some of these fish... I had to actually hear the rod shaking in the rod hole to know that these fish was on the line in order to, to put these fish in the boat. So um, I just want you to keep in mind, whenever you're going fishing, have a plan on how you want to catch fish. But make sure you have the equipment in the boat. You know, whether it's slip barbers on a, on a, on a short rod that you can cast, or whether you have your, your 12 foot jig pole so you can get down as deep as you need to be. Um, I tend to want to use my fishing pole so I know I'm going to be fishing in water 15 feet or less. But just make sure you, when you go out on a trip, don't just go out planning to fish one way or for one set of conditions because the fish may not agree with the plan that you had. So, um, lucky, lucky I had the, um, the long poles in the boat and I make sure the, you know, when the jig master was on his way to the lake, I said, hey, make sure you get your long poles. I don't know why, but I just kind of had a good feeling that my primary method is casting um, those grubs and retrieving it back in. I just had a feeling that wasn't going to pan out or maybe it wouldn't pan out. With that being said, I want to talk a little bit about why you want to use double jigs. Now, one of the reasons, obviously, that comes to mind is if you have two bait in the water, two baits in the water, the odds of you catching a fish is probably twice as good as having one bait in the water. And you're going to see a perfect example of that in this particular, in one of the video clips that's going to be coming up. 
Now, another reason you would want to use multiple baits is it'll give you an opportunity to use different colors. Imagine this. If you had six 12-foot rods out in the water with two bait on each one of them. So now you got 12 bait out there floating around. Just think about that. 12 bait versus just having maybe one pole with a mineral or something on it. So you can put more bait out there in the water. You can put more, especially if you jig fishing, you can put different colors of bait out there in the water. And you're going to see that in this video. I was fishing with two poles, which means I had um, two poles. Each pole had two jigs on it. So I was fishing with four different colors of bait at any one time. And it um, seems like they were, hitting, they were hitting basically all the colors. But um, that's one of the things that you can do when you're fishing with a double jig rig and if you have multiple um, rod setups, you can really try out an arsenal of different colors. And you may find that they're hitting one color better than another color. So um, you can also place your baits at different levels. So just think about if you have, you know, three, four, five, whatever the number of rods are. Sometimes you can maybe know about where those fish are, but you don't know exactly where they are. Now, I tend to, I think the preferred method is probably setting your jigs when you tie them up together about 18 inches apart. I think I probably had mine maybe 22, 23 inches apart. Um, and what you what you what you're doing is you can have one at one level in the water column and one at another level in the water column. So it's going to help you locate better. It's almost like a fish finder. It's going to help you locate better the level where these fish are feeding at. So that's another big um, benefit of doing that. Now you might say, well, I see you in other videos. You were trolling with long lines that were way out behind the boat. <clears throat> And that is a preferred method. I like the long lines because I can maintain that even um, trolling level going through the water column with the jig. But if I'm going to be in an area where it's much more, the fish are more confined and concentrated, you know, with long lines, you have to make a long run, turn around, throw the lines out behind the water, and come back again. If the fish are only in like a 20 or 30 foot section, that's kind of wasteful. If you're losing your long rods and double jigs, like I'm doing in this particular video, and you're going to see these clips coming up here shortly, you're going to see that it's just more efficient. Um, these fish over the past couple of weeks, they want the bait coming through the water a lot slower. Um, more, I would say probably a week and a half, two weeks ago, probably 0.8 to maybe 1.2, even 1.4. They wanted that speed of the jig coming through the water, and they were attacking it pretty good. Now, I'm not really chasing that bait down like that anymore. Um, I'm finding a lot more success around 0.5 or half mile per hour speed. And um, this double jig um, setup was ideal for that. You know, I could stay in the area where the fish were longer. I kind of make S turns. So when you make an S turn with your boat, when you go to the um, left, that rod that's over on that left hand side is going to move a little bit slower. Bait's going to drop a little bit deeper. The rod over here on the right hand side, when it goes around, it's going to be moving a little bit faster. And you want to pay attention to that because then you will see, um, just pay attention to which, which, where you're getting the bikes. If you're getting the bikes when it's swinging around that way and moving faster, maybe you need to speed up a little bit. Um, if you're getting most of the bikes on that inside rod that's moving a little bit slower when you ask turn, then um, maybe you want to slow up a little bit. You know, so you want to read where you're getting those bikes at. So with that being said, I think I've covered all of the um, pros and cons. Now there, there is one downside that um, that's a little bit of a hassle when dealing with the long rods, especially with 2G. Now I kind of like to break my poles in half. I have a two-piece rod and two-piece rod, and I like to break them in half and you know um, hook the bait in the eyelid and tighten it up. It's nice and clean. Then I put a sleeve over it. Carrying these two bait jigs, and I've come up with a, a, a method of doing that. I may even include it in this video so I can show you and um, how you can hook it up so it won't be so messy and get, get all tangled up. But um, other than storage after fishing, I really have um, no complaints. I can only say that um, there's a lot of positives and a lot of good things about fishing with 12 foot or 14 or 16 foot for that matter, if that's what you like. I have some 16 foot rods. No, I'm sorry, I have 14 foot rods, but they're three piece. A little bit more effort in sticking them together and um, just something that I, I have them in case I need them. But for the most part, I'm using my 12 foot rods for this type of um, for this type of fishing. So um, with that being said, 
let me grab some fishing line and some jigs and we're going to show you how to set up this rig. Now, um, I wanted to go out. I wanted to go outside to show you how to set this rig up, but it is raining extremely hard here today. So I'm going to have to go through and show this, demonstrate this setup here in the studio. So um, I couldn't bring my 12 foot rod in. And by the way, I use a I use a B and M um, 12 foot rod. The model number for that rod is BGJP 122. And I'm going to put a link. In the description now that link is going to be i'm a i happen to be a bass pro affiliate and um that link is going to will take you to bass pro so um i just want to make sure that i do full disclosure if you purchase using that link i will get a um small fee or commission for that particular sale so just want to make sure that you know that um it's one way you can help support the channel but it's also a way for you to just click on a link and use the exact same rod that you see me using another benefit of that rod while i'm on that um subject is that while looking for that link or creating that link i discovered they actually make replaceable rod tips so you know when you're buying uh, when you're buying rods if you break the end on a rod you want to make sure you have a manufacturer where you can just buy the end piece without having to buy that entire um, both section of the rod all over again. So I did stumble upon that by accident when I was looking for the link to post in the description. So what I did here today is I just brought in the last section, the top end section of um, a BNN, BNM fishing rod. So I'm going to have it here and um, I already have line running through it. And today I'm going to demonstrate here using the Yozuri line. And um, this is 10 pound test. I wanted something a little big, so hopefully you could actually see the line here. But in actuality, I like to use um, six to eight pound test on this particular rig. Um, the smaller the line just seems like to me, you just get more back. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with this, how to set this rig up. I'm going to pull some line off of here and make sure I get enough. So the first step you want to do, um, you always want the, now I have some jig heads here, let me see if you can get a decent view of those jig heads. Now I'm using a 1 8 ounce and a 1 16 ounce. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure that you put the heavier, um, the heavier jig head down in the very bottom at the end of your line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this 1 16 ounce. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to thread it through the line. Just thread it through there for now. So we have that jig head on the line. And I'm just going to slide it up and get it way over there out of the way. Now I'm going to take this 1 8 ounce jig head and I'm going to attach it to my jig here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trolling knot and um i put a link in the video on how to tie this knot also or i may just go ahead and release the video i don't know why i keep putting that off but um i have several videos out there on how to tie knots but anyway this is just your normal old trolling knot it's very fast it's a very fast knot it's a very durable knot and it works out um it works out well with fluorocarbon line which is another point i think i forgot to say is this year's your line that i'm using is actually a fluorocarbon i love these fluorocarbon lines they're smooth like mono they're tough you know like um your braided line is kind of halfway in between them i just love this line so then i'm just going to click off the um excess line as you can see the position of the jig now imagine it coming to you so now what we have is we have the one oops up spinning we have the 1 16th ounce and we have the 1 8th ounce now i like to keep mine i mean you're supposed to have these maybe about 18 inches apart i like to stretch mine out a little bit more than i like to kind of go 20 to 22 inches so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up about I want to go up far enough 
so that after I make two or three loops around my fingers to tie a loop knot and I have a video out there for how to tie a loop knot also which I'll include in the description but um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it so that it's double okay and once it's double I'm gonna pull off enough so that I can wrap it maybe three or four times around make sure you got that I want to wrap it one two three you see that and um, then you want to pull this off of your fingers and you want to run your line through it got that and once again this is just your basic old your basic old loop knot is all, is all that it is. It's just your basic old loop knot and you want to cinch that knot down. You want to cinch it down real good. So I hope you can see that. Cinch that knot down real good and that's your loop. And once again I put a, a link in the description of how to tie a loop knot. And also you know it's a matter of preference. I kind of like about this amount of distance between my knot because this thing is going to be kind of coming through the water. It's going to be kind of coming through the water, you know, like this. Um, except it's going to be back over here behind. It's going to be kind of coming through the water like this. Kind of hard for me to show you without this thing actually having a resistance of the water. But I like to have mine maybe five, six, seven inches um, behind the line as it's coming through. It's really a matter of personal preference. You may want yours up here one inch from it, you know. But I keep mine about this distance um, that you see here. So what you're going to end up with is two jig heads. Now at this point, you just put your um, whichever jig you, your um, plastic bait that you choose to use, you just thread it on to your jig heads. You could, um, another thing I would like to say, instead of using a, instead of using a jig head here, I could have very easily have just put a hook on this particular one and then tipped it with a minnow or I could put just the jig head leave the jig head here and tip it with a minnow so this particular rig gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of options and um, you're gonna see coming up here real soon in the video you're gonna see how effective this particular double jig rig is um, at catching fish so um, let's go ahead and move on to the next clip Not a mega monster, but <laughs> maybe he's gonna maybe he's gonna start to show up. You see that second one? <laughs> you got it? Yes, I got sir. two. You got two. Oh, boy, you were trying to catch it. Oh, he came on him. I got two. <laughs> I got two you on it. <laughs> Look at that. You see that second one? <laughs> you got it? Yes, sir. 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 You got it? Yes, sir
<laughs> Two of them. Two of them. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped on that and went there and hit, didn't he? Yeah, I can't move. Stay right here. Mm -hmm. Stay back here, dog. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Time you start putting that up, that's when he hit it. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna look back and see your boat going so we're gonna stop. We're stop going to be home. Well, ain't that something, little man? Yeah, he's in the middle of it. That's where he at. It'll move back in, huh? I don't think I'm gonna leave him back. Bet they done took my flavor enhancers off. Got DJ man on this one on this side. Got who? See, a DVD. Okay. Drag the bottom. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh. There you go. There you go. There you go. It's on that blue and white one too, dog. Mm -hmm. Man, you switch all of them over to that. We've been all over this lake today. Just we didn't think with the water temperature being um, about 60 degrees that the fish would have been over in this shallow water. But it's actually what we're finding them. I mean, we just came straight down the middle of the lake, and the fish are out here in the middle. Everything was going great, but now we're having technical difficulties. So um, for some reason, I only got 7.5 volts. My Garmin keeps cutting off. That you did. Yeah, he hit my line. Oh, he did? He hit mine and came up. Oh, man. You got it? God, man, what did you do? You tore your stuff up. You tore it off, dog. He, he tore it up. He tore it off. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big one, though. The one right here. There you go. Yeah, you got yours up. closer together than mine. Yeah, he tore that one off. Yeah, dog. That's all. saw. <laughs> man, you let him dog get. I had some drag on. Jig Master just had a nice one. <laughs> Last time we saw the fish, he was headed north. God, dog, dog, I he was headed north. You got him, dog? Yes, sir. <laughs> got him. It's getting darker and darker outside so what one of the things i wanted to do was turn on the light inside of the boat for a couple of reasons one is so i could see what was actually going on inside of the boat i mean i'm pulling fish here that i can't even see you know so i wanted to see what was going on in the boat as well as being able to provide a, a better um, quality video for you guys and um one of the problems i did i got the lights on the camera and i got the camera to work in the process in the dark i disconnected the video cable so we don't actually have any audio from this point forward in the video good news is this video is kind of coming to an end um but i wanted you to be, be able to see some of the fish that we're putting in the boat
Okay, here you can see this is a pretty nice fish. This is a two pound crappie. Um, I like to refer to them as humpbacks when they get this size, but um, this um, the day per turned out pretty well. I mean, this is probably one of the most productive days I had considering my plan totally just falling apart. I planned to fish one way in the creeks, but I had a backup plan and I was prepared to implement that plan. So um, I ended up catching fish in a different location in the lake using different techniques than what I had planned. But overall, I was pretty, um, pretty happy with the outcome. So um, once again, thanks for watching Hook Legends. Alright, got a nice one here, one nice crappie to go in the cooler.